Greetings, Doombots. Tony Scongili here with the first part of his new series, Evaluating Raid Characters to Save You Time and Materials. Now, I just want to go over it real quick now so I don't have to recap it every single video. These are going to be quick videos. Basically, I'm going to look at the hardest level of every existing Greek raid first, so Alpha, Beta, and Gamma, and I'm going to look at not only which characters and teams are usable or preferable in a lot of those fights, but over time I'm going to look at where their overlaps are, which characters are great in Alpha, Beta, and Gamma, which characters are only good in 1 or 2, and we're going to have kind of an idea that at the end of this, where players should be investing their materials. This way you can cherry pick the perfect 10, 15, or 20 characters that you could use in order to make sure that your lane and any lanes in any other Greek raids will be handled. Now we're going to start with the alpha because duh, and we're going to start just by taking a quick look at the raid map. Now again, these are all going to be done uh, using the hardest version, which at the time of this video is the alpha 4, etc. And I want to make sure, because if they work here, they will work on the lesser ones. And and this is really the goal. This is where the most people will be striving towards. This is where the most materials will uh, come up short. So a lot of times you may notice there are characters that I used uh, to clarify that you may not have. They may be limited edition. They may be characters like Black Bolt or Ultron. Uh, and that goes without saying. The fact that it's the best doesn't matter whether you have him or not or her. It matters that it is the best so if you don't have them there are always more options as you'll see but we'll get into that when we start looking at the teams as far as the alpha raid is concerned there are three base categories it bases on location of characters city global and cosmic as well as a handful of shared lanes as you can tell global city global cosmic no city cosmic I guess there's too much of a jump there uh, in reality the more global characters you have, the more overall nodes you'll be able to do, as you can take the pure global lane and anything in between. So you always want to focus a little bit more on having enough global characters to kind of satiate the fights in between your cosmic or city. That said, there are optimal teams on each lane that you can use to fight pretty much any fight, uh, especially as you've invested high in them. I can tell you that I've done every single lane in every single raid, and I've spoken with many other players, both in my alliance and outside, to determine what teams they've used to come up with these lists. So just a quick recap, this is what the alpha will look like. If you haven't seen it before, good. Uh, congratulations. You're going to start doing it every, I believe, three months on cooldown until they start releasing additional raids. Uh, and it's very unlikely that much will change regarding the requirements. The only thing that will change is most likely uh, what the fights look like. So I'm not even going to show those here. Anyway, let's go straight to teams. I've sorted out a bunch of different teams using uh, msf.gg. I'm going to quick give them a shameless plug. msf.gg is a phenomenal tool if you don't know about it. Uh, it allows you to upload your roster and kind of keep track of everything while we're waiting for an API to come out. Uh, it also lets you build maps, as you just saw, uh, and kind of re keep track of what you're doing and what you could be working on. Phenomenal resource. If you've never used it, I recommend taking a uh, stop by. Very easy to integrate with other features. So check out msf.gg if you haven't. Now, as you can see here, I've went ahead and sorted out a couple of different options based on what you are most likely to have and what will most likely benefit you as you progress, separating by city, global, and cosmic options. Obviously, there are individual characters that might throw everything off, so I tried to stay very close in line with characters or teams players either have invested in up to the point or could easily uh, invest in from that point forward. Starting with the city characters, uh, what I can show you is the obvious choice for city is the darling of all city players, the defenders. You've invested in them from the beginning, probably. You have a decent chunk of them. They are adequate for a good number of the city nodes. There are a couple that are very difficult for them to defeat if they're under about 350k power. So uh, there is some modularity needed for that, but ultimately they are a phenomenal team. 
uh, the Spider-Verse team, with the addition of Symbiote Spider-Man, has truly broken that lane wide open. You have a new level of sustainability you didn't have before. The fact that you can then combine those characters with other characters and just create like mini versions of both teams, truly phenomenal. And they are on their own, a standalone phenomenal raid team. So you have that. And then there's a couple of flex options just to show them off as I go. Uh, there are a couple of decent Merc characters, Merc Lieutenant and Merc Riot Guard will Definitely fill a gap as you're bringing up other characters. There's a pretty decent tank in Merc Riot Guard, as well as a pretty decent potential heal from Merc Lieutenant and a little bit of a speed up. Rhino is a phenomenal option, as well as the entire Sinister Six team. If you find yourself uh, wanting to invest in them or happen to uh, have a strong version of that team, Ghost Rider, phenomenal flex. He is, in fact, a brawler. Uh, so, not bad when you pair it with Ms. Marvel. And uh, Hand Sentry, just again, another minion that kind of works as a pretty decent protector that protects the rest of your team. Feel free to sub him in on a particularly difficult node, and you shouldn't have too many problems. For my money, the team that I've been able to use uh, for some success is uh, Ms. Marvel, Iron Fist, Spider Miles, Symbiote Spider Man, and Luke Cage. Now, if you don't know this, the, uh, in raids, Sustain is king. The uh, ability for you to not die is the most important. So Symbiote Spider-Man and Spider-Miles will uh, more or less sustain themselves uh, through their own actions. Ms. Marvel and Iron Fist and Luke Cage can not only sustain themselves, but give each other team-wide buffs and a little bit of healing. Ms. Marvel will have an additional uh, extra assist from three of the characters on the team, potentially four if Luke Cage calls her, but... By the time Luke Cage is basic and you already won the fight, this is the team that I've been having great success with. Uh, if you've been using a different team or one of the completed city teams, you know, feel free to comment below. Let me know what you've been doing, and I'll factor them in in future reiterations of this video. Moving on to the global. Now, same kind of conversation. Uh, Fury Shield, as a completed team, is more than adequate to accomplish pretty much anything in the global lane. Uh, now, you may not have Fury Shield, but their investment level is not as high as some other teams uh, that you may be able to get away with using either Fury Shield as it is, or maybe you've invested in Coulson, especially on those nodes where you can kind of mix and match some characters. Uh, phenomenal uh, option overall. AIM, recently a front runner. Recently, since the rework, AIM has kind of stepped up a little bit as a, a self-sustained team. That's pretty good in other game modes. So if you happen to have invested in AIM, you should have no problem. They don't need that much to get going, but once they get going, they can walk across the global lanes without an issue. I'm not talking about other global teams. Um, the X-Men, I try to leave them out of conversations. They don't have as much sustain. I also don't want to really talk about the Wakandans because the investment point you need for them is incredibly high. But I will talk about some global flex options. Now... Uh, if you notice, here's Ultron, here's Phoenix, here's Sinister, here's Shuri, and here's Yo-Yo. These are some characters that will improve your overall global team, but the teams they, like Yo-Yo's team is not a global team. It's a cosmic team. She just happens to be global. She will flex relatively okay onto a Fury Shield team as she does have the shield tag. Ultron, just a great all-around character. Feel free to throw him on any one of the teams. You'll be okay. Phoenix, really good for boss nodes, but since she basically kills herself, you don't want her on the, the team too often because you really want to save it for either an important fight, like the end, or if you're going for 60%, the last boss fight before, uh, or else he's just going to die. Sinister, he's a healer that gives you an extra character, all around positive, but he's very uh, hard to come by, so didn't want to make an entire team around him. And Shuri, just a phenomenal healer. And if you do have the Wakandans, they will be absolutely great at the global lane. Best global team. So the best global team is, uh, for my standards, uh, Scientist Supreme, because of her ability to buff, flip, and res. Shuri to sustain. Ultron, because he's the best damage. Uh, Sinister to... Uh, Kind of play the numbers game and take the strongest person on your opponents, but also get a pretty decent heal with a heal block clear. And Yo-Yo, because Yo-Yo is amazing. Uh, that's the best global team that I've been able to use going up the line. And just, again, comment below. Let me know what teams you've been using, if you've been using any of these or some other standard derivation. 
uh, they should be okay. Last, we have the Cosmic. Now, the first team we have is the BKT, or the Guardians with Minerva, or the Guardians with Thanos and Minerva. Pretty much any Guardians team. Uh, but specifically this Guardians team, uh, this team has been going coast to coast since its inception on the Cosmic Lane, and as it progressed, it just got a little bit better. Uh, so it's kind of an oldie but a goodie. It also has a little bit of overlap with U6, so you probably don't have to go too much further than using that team to succeed. Uh, the Asgardians, a recent addition, uh, have a pretty decent amount of sustain uh, if your Hela is strong enough with Greg. And again, you can flex out a character here or there you, uh, in order to make sure they have more sustain. Loki might not be the most important uh, character on the team, or Sif might not be the most important character on the team. And you can swap any of them out for a different cosmic healer like Minerva or Mantis. Uh, but ultimately, this team will be able to go coast to coast, uh, as I've tried and many others have reported. My team was 214, and I was able to get to the final boss on the Cosmic Lane without any problem, so it shouldn't be too difficult for anyone else. Last, we have the Cosmic Flex options, which are characters that uh, individually, if you have them, feel free to use them. Sub them on one of these teams, you should have no problem. And that is Invisible Woman, Phenomenal Protector character. Uh, Black Bolt, duh. Uh, Mantis, phenomenal healer. Captain Marvel, basically an all-around bad girl. Does what she needs to do. And Ronin, uh, kind of a utility solid character, especially if you're working with uh, a node that has a lot of debuffs or if you just need to get rid of a tank at the right time. Ronin is actually surprisingly really well in a lot of the raids, and you're going to see his name pop up a lot. Um, and those are just flex options. You can either mix and match. Uh, the overall idea is that these characters are great. So just to go into what the best cosmic team will end up being, uh, this is the team that I used uh, the last pass of this, uh, and lo and behold, my success uh, was phenomenal. And it was Star Wars, Black Bolt, Thanos, Minerva, and Captain Marvel. Uh, and you can see the placement is as it would be right here. Uh, the purpose of that is that Black Bolt is doing 99.9% .9 of the damage, so I want him to be fed as much energy as possible. Uh, Captain Marvel is just there to gain a little bit of benefit from the presence of Minerva and vice versa, as well as to have a pretty decent buff clear. So this team uh, will probably be, if you, could, if you could pick of any characters, this team would most easily go coast to coast. Obviously, you might not have any or all of these characters, uh, these just represent the best version of that team. Feel free to improvise and replace Rocket instead of Black Bolt or Hela and Thor instead of Thanos and Minerva. You kind of just mix and match at this point. Now again, these aren't the be-all end-all. This is just the teams that uh, I would recommend to any player if you're trying to progress a little bit further in through the alpha raids. Uh, in the next video, we're going to go over the beta raids. We're going to start seeing where the overlaps are, the characters that uh, maybe if you invested in here, you're going to have an additional value placed by moving on to the next raid. And at the end of this series, we're going to kind of look at everything and determine if there were any characters that should be invested in because they work in all three versus characters that only work in one or two. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate your time. Have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli. And I'll catch you later.